Hi everybody, this is Frank Kern. I'll skip the fancy introduction. The name of this video is called How to Make Lots of Money Forever. Um, it all relies on this secret magic formula. Okay, yeah, big secret here. Are you ready? Here we go. First you build a list of targeted leads, then you sell them some stuff, and then you sell them more stuff. And I'm not kidding, swear to God, that's pretty much it. The niche businesses I have do over a million dollars a year in sales volume, and that's the big secret magic formula that I start. And I'll give you, or that I follow, and I'll give you a little secret here. That's really the big secret magic formula that everybody I knows follows, right? It's no, uh, it's no secret that I'm friends with all the big names in the internet marketing industry, right? Well, that's pretty much what everybody does. We build a list of targeted leads, we sell them stuff, and then we sell them more stuff. That's pretty much it. So before we get started and before I really get into showing you how and the, and the psychology behind the list building and all of that kind of stuff, I want to go over some like fundamentals here. Don't know why people don't teach the fundamentals. Maybe because they're not sexy or exciting, but they are what makes money. Makes money for me anyway, so here we go. Fundamental number one, you have to be targeting a market that actually buys stuff. <laughs> Imagine that, okay? Um, the market that you're targeting, they have to want what it is you're selling. All right, so if you don't have either of those two things, no point in building a list because you're in the wrong market, selling the wrong stuff. Third thing is you have to be cool to these people and actually provide value to them or none of this stuff will work. So you know how you see like gurus come and go or whatever. A lot of times they'll get those first two pieces right, but they're not cool to the subscribers. They don't really give anything of any value, and that's why they go away forever. Well, you can't do that. You always want to be providing value to people, or none of the stuff I'm about to show you is going to work. So let's start with the market, okay? First of all, a list of people who've never been interested in buying stuff is a waste of time. You don't want to build a list of those kind of people. I see people do it though, all right? So if you had like, if you targeted a list of people whose main topic was why I hate buying stuff on the internet, probably not the best group of people to target building a list of, right? All right, common sense, but needs to be said, okay? Now, a hot market is a market that's proven to be responsive. It's not a market that we personally are passionate about or whatever. Hopefully the two, the two collide there and we're passionate about a market that's proven to be responsive. But really what you want to focus on is a market that actually buys stuff. Okay, And it's super easy to figure out if a market is, is responsive if you just ask the right questions. And here are my secret magic questions. Are you ready? Here they are. This is big, heavy stuff. Question number one, are they buying stuff now? Uh-huh. If they're buying stuff now, pretty good indicator they're a pretty good market, right? Question number two, are there lots of people spending money to reach them? AKA, is there advertising in this market? Again, pretty basic stuff, but basics have worked out pretty good for me. Third question is, has this been going on for a while? Now, as simple as these questions uh, appear, the reality is they're really that simple. So now, our, our, our other little key component to making all this stuff work is they have to want what you're selling, right? And I know that uh, some folks watching this might not have a product to sell yet, but if you're going to start building a list, you at least have to have an end goal in mind, all right? So you want to have, like, you know, the intent that you're going to build a list and continually promote affiliate products to them, or at least you're going to or you're at least going to develop your own product, right? So... If you don't have your own product yet, there's no problem, but at least you need to know where you're going. You know, you don't want to just build a list for the heck of it, right? So let's talk about a product, okay? This could be your product or somebody else's. First of all, look, here's reality, okay? I know lots and lots of Internet folks want to hype you up and be like, yeah, yeah, you know, Internet's great, Internet's great, money everywhere, blah, blah, blah. Fact of the matter is in business, Internet business or otherwise, nothing happens until something gets sold. Neither you nor I are going to make a dime, typically, unless something is sold. Now, there's some cases online you can make money by just getting people to opt into different lists and stuff, but the vast majority of my money has been made by selling stuff. And every single person that I know, and I know a lot of them, who make money on the internet make money by selling stuff, okay? Obvious, fundamental, non-sexy, all that's true, but that's the way it is, all right? So, you can either sell your stuff or you can sell someone else's stuff as an affiliate, right? I believe you'll make more money if you focus on selling your own stuff, okay? Now, let me prove that to you. Let's, uh, let's, let's picture now in our minds all the internet gurus that we know, all the wild success stories of people online who've had lasting success. They all sell their own stuff, 
Okay, sure, some of them might have started out as an affiliate, but they all sell their own stuff. There's a reason for this. More money in selling your own stuff. Duh. Okay, and brings us back to what, what this whole video is about. The point of having a list is to sell stuff. Okay? <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, don't build a list just to build a list. You know, it's to, so you can sell them stuff. Right? Duh. I know. But hey, that's the way it is. So, here is, in terms of a product, the magic questions which reveal what will make you money. Okay? You ready? What kind of stuff is the market buying now? What kind of stuff do other guys spend money to advertise on? What kind of stuff has been selling a really long time? Mm -hmm. Okay, those are the three magic questions, right? I know this seems basic, but I'm telling you, as much as everyone wants to confuse the issue and be like, I'm going to tell you the big super duper secret to making money. Yeah, any super duper secret, man. It's common sense, okay? Here they are. The point is, you only want to sell stuff that's been proven. No point in reinventing the wheel. So if you remember a minute ago, we were doing the old screen cam thing, and I was showing you we were walking around through ClickBank, and we were saying, well, what if you want to sell, like, information golf products? Well, you know, we had proof that the market was buying golf-related info products, right? Because we saw right there in ClickBank's marketplace, the top products were golf information products. We knew that other people were spending money to advertise on golf-related information products because we saw them advertising in Google Pay-Per-Click, right? And we know that kind of stuff's been selling a really long time, okay? So all three indicators are there. That's probably worth building a list in that market if that's what you want to do. You know, that's how I test all my stuff. That's my magic formula right there. See, now you know why I don't give a lot of big seminars because I'd be up there on stage and it'd take like an hour and I'd be like, okay, we're done. That's all I do, right? All right, so you only want to sell stuff that's proven. No point in reinventing the wheel. Now, here's the ugly truth, okay, that lots of people want to gloss over and I don't think we should gloss over this at all. We should celebrate it because it kind of forces you to build a list. The ugly truth is most people who see your stuff simply will not buy it, period, the first time they see it. They just ain't going to buy. All right, you know, you talk about, wow, man, my website's killer. It got 10% conversion, visitors to sales. And, like, very few people ever get 10% conversion, especially from cold traffic. Well, guess what? That means 90 people who came to your website didn't buy. All right, and 10% is ridiculous. Like most of the time you see like two out of every 100 web visitors will buy your stuff. The other 98 go away, okay? And listen, out of those 98 people, uh, many of them may never buy your stuff. So even if you follow up with those people, if you have a list, they might still just not ever, ever buy your stuff. And this is normal. It has nothing to do with you. I mean, have you ever gone to a car dealership and looked at like a Honda or something and said, yeah, that's a pretty good Honda. Then you left and the Honda guy calls you a million times. You're like, yeah, I thought the car was cool, but you know, I think I'm going to buy the Toyota or whatever. Yeah, we all do stuff like that. It's just the way it is. Okay, so don't sweat it. But here's the deal. Almost all of these people will eventually buy something. Okay, and you might as well get paid when they do it. All right, and that is why, right there, that's why you build a list. And if that wasn't enough, all right, here are some more reasons to build a list and literally, please, completely forever ignore anyone who tells you otherwise because they're out of their minds. All right, here's the deal. If you treat them right, even a small list will make you a fortune. I bet you always thought, you know, you had to have a really big list, right? I'm going to show you something in a minute that's going to surprise you. If you treat them right, a small list can make you a fortune. Even if you stop adding subscribers to your list, a good list can pay you for years. So the bottom line is, you work once to build this list, and if you treat them right, you could potentially get paid forever. The point I'm trying to make here is, when you do what I'm telling you to do, size is unimportant. The number of subscribers are unimportant. Here's what's important. The quality. Okay, remember that little list I just showed you? No new subscribers at all have been added to that list since the end of 2004. That particular list right there. So it's now 2008. Okay, so you figure the end of 2004 was really the beginning of 2005, and it's now the beginning of 2008. That's three years. No new people have been added to that list. Three years. All right, I've been just completely underground. Okay, I did not publish a weekly newsletter or keep up with any regular communication with that list, all right? So in other words, I didn't, like, work really hard. The only thing I did with those guys is I give them as much cool stuff as possible 
whenever I come across new cool stuff to give them. So I'm not just mailing them for the hell of it. Like, only mail them there's something really cool, and they know this, and they, they appreciate it because they get bombarded with everybody else, right? So what do you think that little tiny list has done for me since I cut off access to it back in 2004? Well, in the year 2005 to 2006 range, I launched the Serializer seminars exclusively to that tiny little list, which at that point was a little over 8,000 people. Some people have had the nerve to unsubscribe over the past couple of years. That's why the list is smaller. Either that or their email addresses quit working. I don't know. But the Serializer seminar, a million bucks, okay? 7,500 people on a tiny little list that I don't mail much, a million bucks. Pretty good. But as they say in the old infomercials, wait, there's more, right? In the year 2006, I promoted and created and ran, along with my man uh, Ed, Ed Dale, the Ultra Underachiever newsletter. Over the course of the year 2006, that brought in another million dollars, okay? Now, in 2007, I kind of didn't really do anything. I sort of settled into life here in La Jolla. Did some behind-the-scenes stuff, you know, I guess if you want to call it that, helping some of my buddies out with their big fancy launches and whatnot. But I mainly just worked in my little niches and kind of goofed off. Anyway... October 29th, 2007, did a little test run for mass control, brought in around $200,000 in like under, you know, 20 minutes. Actually, the first class sold out in under 20 minutes or 29 minutes or something like that. And then I did a little downsell where they got less stuff and that brought in the rest of the money. But, you know, one day, $200,000, right? So over that 2005 through 2007 period, that tiny little list I just showed you brought in $2,200,000. And that's me pretty much just messing around because the whole time I was building my niche businesses as well, right? It's not like you've seen me all over the internet forever with all these promotions. You haven't, you know? I mean, this is rocket science, or this is not rocket science, right? I mean, I've been laying low. Okay, so let me say it again. Let me just be as obnoxious as I can. You do not need a giant list. There's absolutely no point in you just beating your head against the wall going, I've only got a couple thousand people on my list. You know, if you think a couple thousand people is small, try, try getting on stage and talking to a couple thousand people. That'll let you know how big a couple thousand people really is. People are people, right? Those are individuals. You don't need a giant list, okay? All you need to do is build a targeted and responsive list using the stuff I just showed you, right? You'd find, like, good markets that are buying stuff, build a targeted, responsive list in a market like that, and treat them well. And, of course, you use a little mass control from time to time, okay? And uh, when you do that, that's what, that's what really lets people know that you're okay and creates a bond with folks, and they buy stuff from you. So how do you do it? You know, how do you build one of these big lists? I think I've sold you on, on building a list pretty good, right? Just in case there were some folks watching this who really wondered if you should build a list, all right? So... Here's my magic list building formula, okay? And I, I hope you to detect the sarcasm when I'm using the word magic here. You find something that'll help your market and that will be of value to them, okay? Then you offer it to them for free in exchange for their email address. And the third step is you do that a lot. That is my magic list building formula right there, ladies and gentlemen. Please do not let the shock and awe overcome you. You know, but you might be thinking, gosh, man, I was really hoping you'd reveal some kind of crazy secret stuff in this video. Listen, man, this is how I built a list of over 400,000 and counting subscribers to my niche businesses. And remember, this is, this is not joint venture stuff where like in my little niche businesses, I'm, you know, quote unquote famous or whatever, like I am in the internet marketing world. This is just people that have no clue who I am. I'm nobody, right? I use that same little formula right there to build a list of over 400,000 and counting subscribers in my niche businesses. Okay, it works. All right, now here are the mechanics of how it works. Are you ready for some more fancy video editing? I made these graphics myself. Here we go, ready? Pew, traffic. All right, you get yourself some traffic. Pow. You send it to a web page, kind of like my mass control page where you have something cool and you're offering them something of value in exchange for the email address. All right, you ready for another one? Pew. And then, wow, look at that. Take that, Andy Jenkins. Some of those folks will join your list, right? Hey, rocket science. And some of those folks who join your list, they'll buy your stuff. There it is. That's the whole fancy diagram. Don't get mad at me and turn this video off, okay? I'm going to walk you through how to do it. And I'm doing this, I'm kind of like joking around with this, but this is really all there is to it. So you're probably looking at this stuff and you're like, 
duh, Frank, you know, tell me something I don't know. I've been hearing this for years. Well, guess what? I'm getting hammered by people saying, hey, I, I want mass control, but I don't have a list. Do I have to have a list? Show me how to make a list. So, you know, apparently nobody's really taught this stuff well because people aren't taking action and doing it. So, you know, just stick with me here. Let me walk you through it. I'll help you get a list. You know, I promise you, this is really easy. All right. So I was wondering, I'm sitting around, I'm checking the old email. People were saying, Frank, I'm enjoying your stuff. This is great. And then, but by the way, I don't have a list. I'm freaking out. Help me. So I decided to, you know, take my Saturday here, uh, overlooking the ocean right now. I make you this video. And I started wondering, well, why don't people have a list? You know, because what I just showed you is simple, right? This is nothing new. It's not like, oh, my God, breakthrough. Give away stuff in exchange for the email address. Amazing. You know, no, you know, you, you know this stuff. So, so why aren't people building a list? Well, I figured people are getting hung up in, in several different little areas. So here are the big questions that I'm getting. Where do I get the traffic, okay, to drive to these opt-in pages that gives away the free stuff, okay? Big one right there, right? I'll show you. Easy. Second one, well, what do I give away? Right? You know, what kind of bribe can I have that'll get people to opt in? Do I need like a new like flaming tomato plant or something really amazing to get people to opt in? What do I do? Valid question, no problem. Uh, and then, this is a big one that unfortunately not enough people really focus on. That is, how do I turn leads into buyers? Right? How do I get people to buy my stuff after they've joined the list? Well, that's, that's a good question. Glad you asked that. Happens to be what mass control is all about. A little bit of a self-serving thing I put in the video here, but a valid question. And then, of course, for the technically challenged, how do I set all this stuff up? Well, I'm going to hook you up because you are nice enough to be on my list, and I practice what I preach, right? So I'll show you how to do all of that stuff. Let's we'll start off with da -da -da, traffic. Okay, here's the deal, the, uh, the hype-free deal about traffic. You can either buy it, or you can get it from JV Partners. Or if you're good at SEO and Web 2.0 stuff, you can get it from there. That stuff mystifies me. I don't understand any of it. I am a complete illiterate dunce when it comes to SEO. So we're going to just focus on the buying it or get it from JV Partners because that's all I do. Well, when it comes to my niches, I buy it. Okay? Here's where I get it from. The Google AdWords, the Yahoo paid search, some of them there banner ads, and something called CPM mail drops, which for some unbeknownst to me reason, nobody ever talks about it in the marketing world. That's where you pay giant email list brokers who have legitimate email lists to send email for you, uh, advertising your free thing, which people then go to a website, give you their email address in exchange to receive. It's called a CPM mail drop. CPM stands for cost per thousand. Great way to get traffic to your website in like, you know, a bill a second. Uh, no Google slap with that either. It's pretty good. And it's not spam. It's legit. I'll save that for another day. But that's pretty much how I get my traffic, right? And people, you know, I think like a big reason people don't do this is because they get freaked out about buying traffic. You hear so much free traffic, free traffic, free traffic, free traffic stuff that you just think, okay, well, buying traffic is wrong. Or they're afraid to take the risk or whatever. I understand, but I'd like to let you know why you might not be served by being freaked out about buying traffic here, okay? Here, here's the deal. If, if you do it right, the traffic you buy turns into leads or subscribers. I like to call them leads. That's really what they are. Let's call them spade a spade here, okay? They're not subscribers. They're leads to buy your stuff. You want to treat them like gold, but in reality, they're leads, so let's call them leads. Now, here's the deal. Those leads will eventually turn into buyers. They'll either buy your stuff or they'll buy someone else's stuff. And in either case, you should be making money from it, right? And then those buyers turn into repeat buyers, okay? And if, if done correctly, you should make more from the traffic that you buy than you spend on the traffic that you bought. So let me just kind of break that down for you and show you how that really works, all right? Oh, yeah, you make a lot more than you spend. Okay, so like in my niche businesses and, and the peak of, of those businesses, they'll do maybe $100,000 a month in sales and I'll spend $20,000 a month on traffic. Now, I don't suggest you go out and immediately start spending $20,000 a month on traffic. You ramp it up. But you see, I'm making five times more than I'm spending. Okay, so you make a lot more than you spend. This whole thing is scalable like I'm going to show you. So let's work with smaller numbers because I know a lot of people like to, you know, use these giant numbers. I'm guilty too, right? I mean, I kind of talk about my $23.8 million that, you know, I helped make and some of that I got to keep for myself too with all these big launches. So that's how you get people's attention. But let's, let's stay grounded in reality all right so let's say you're buying yourself some traffic and if you spend 10 cents per visitor 
and you buy a thousand visitors from Google or Yahoo or Banners or whatever, that's going to cost you a hundred dollars, right? A thousand visitors, ten cents per visitor, going to cost you a hundred bucks. Easy enough. Okay. Now, you're sending those folks to an opt-in page, right? Remember the little picture I showed you of the mass control site opt-in page? Opt-in pages are good. Sending pictures or sending uh, visitors to a page like that. Okay. If your opt-in page converts at 20%, which is 20 people out of every 100 visitors are opting in, which is about normal for cold traffic. Cold traffic, by the way, is traffic that comes from search engines or whatever where they don't already know about you. Uh, then you'd end up with 200 leads from that traffic because 20% of 1,000 is 200. You know, believe it or not, I actually had to do that with a calculator just to make sure I didn't publicly screw up with basic math here on film. Uh, there's a chance I made to, so if I do, forgive me. All right. So, now we know that. Now let's do some more math. Yeah, you know, talk about sexy videos. Math. What if I'd advertise this video as a math video? Sign up now to get your math video. I'd have really gotten all three subscribers who are interested in math in the world. Okay, here's what we know. We bought a thousand clicks at ten cents per click, so we spent a hundred bucks on traffic, right? That traffic converted at 20%, so we got 200 subscribers out of that. Therefore, our $100 purchase got us 200 subscribers, right? We spent 100 bucks, got 200 subscribers. So if you divide your $100 cost by your amount of subscribers, in this case it's 200, that means we paid 50 cents per subscriber. See, now we know what we're really doing. We're really just buying leads at this point. See, so now we know if we spend 50 cents, we're going to get a subscriber. Every subscriber is costing us 50 cents forever. Okay, that's an important number to know. All right, now here's where it gets cool. Okay, let's say that you're able to convert 3% of your subscribers or your leads into buyers within the first week of having them on your list. This is about normal, okay? This is actually kind of crappy, really. I, if you use mass control, I would certainly hope that you do a lot better. I would almost insist that you get a refund if, if it doesn't work any better than this for you. But let's just say you're only converting 3% of those subscribers into buyers within the first week of having them on your list. Now, you remember, that first week, you're giving them your best, coolest stuff, right? Well, you had 200 leads, right? So 3% of those folks is six sales, okay? Normal. All right, not fancy stuff, normal stuff. 3% of the leads, no big deal. Okay, if you're selling something for $97, that means those six sales would make you $582. Okay, easy enough. So if we take out the $100 we spent to get the traffic and generate the leads in the first place, that means you would net $482. Easy, right? Pretty good money, though, yeah? So you shouldn't freak out about buying traffic. If you do it right, it makes you money. But here's the totally coolest part. You still have the leads, okay? You still have those those leads. So you sold six. Well, you got 194 people who still haven't bought stuff. There's no law that says you can't email them anymore, right? If you're doing them right, they're going to want to hear from you all the time. So you can still convert some of those people into buyers. You can still promote affiliate offers to them. You can do yourself a fancy product launch to them. I mean, of course, we all know there's no money in product launches, right? Come on, that's ridiculous. Uh, but if you want to just, you know, go crazy, you could attempt to do one of these product launches to them. Bottom line is, and I, I believe this firmly and will we'll stand by this statement forever, I believe that good subscribers are as good as money in the bank. All right? And plus, remember, in this little example, you already made a net profit of $482. Now, you know, we're using small numbers here. I'm not trying to dazzle you with this pie-in-the-sky big stuff. I mean, it's easy to generate a 1,000 visitors, you know, especially when you, like, advertise. It's not that hard. Ten cents a click is not impossible to get. That is after, well, let's see, started my niche businesses in late 2003. I'm still paying ten cents per visitor from, uh, from search engines. And sometimes... I'll go hog wild, spike it up to 15 cents, but then I'll lower it down to 10 cents while I'm testing stuff. All right, so I still buy them for 10 cents. It's no big deal. Okay, so yeah, that's really all there is to it. That is the big magic. I don't know why people try to gloss over this whole thing. Yeah, I mean, you had to do a little math. Sorry, but now you see, okay? Buying a little bit of traffic, sending it to an opt-in page, that's what works, right? Okay, it's easy. That's also how I built my 400,000 person list for my niche businesses and those businesses do okay
they bring in about a million dollars per year, which is, I really still to this day, I'm amazed. You know, I'm just like, how could, how could things be so great? This is awesome. Forever grateful for that. So, you know, maybe you should try this magic formula too. Okay. It's pretty cool. All right. Another big thing that freaks people out, which ends up, I guess, why people don't build lists is they say, well, man, you know, what do I give away? I don't know what to offer to get people to subscribe. Ah, you know, and they freak out about it. Yeah, all right. No problem. Here's the old standby. Still works. The free report. If you act now, you also get the free report. The free report has been used forever in the direct response marketing industry, not just on the Internet, but in the, uh, in the rest of the world. Everything, offline, online, sideways, whatever. Free report, you can't go wrong. Okay? Um, if you've been around a long time, <laughs> ever since like 2003, way back in 2003, uh, and you've been watching my stuff, you might remember a product I had called Info Millionaire, which was really one of my favorite little, little digital products about building businesses on the internet. My bribe, my thing that I gave away uh, for that business was actually uh, an audio series. And that worked out really well. So if you can talk into a microphone like, like I'm talking now and record it on a computer, you can give away a downloadable audio. People love that stuff. Okay? And, of course, you're familiar with this, you know, videos. Right? So in the Internet marketing world, videos are really hot right now. And in any market, you know, videos have got a high perceived value. So you give away all this stuff. It doesn't cost you anything to make it. A little time. Right? I mean, yeah, I'm over here. I'm working on a Saturday making this video for you. But the goodwill I'm generating is enormous. Right? People are probably going to join my list as a result of watching this video. It didn't cost me anything to make. Working once, probably going to get paid forever. It's a good idea. So, you know, make one of these three things about whatever it is your market is into. As long as it's something your prospects can benefit from and get value from, you're gold. Okay? Don't overthink it. Who cares what the format is? Just give it to them and make sure it's good. That's the most important thing. Like, don't say, yeah, you're going to get a free report about blah, 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 and then have it suck. You know, a bunch of PLR articles that give absolutely no value at all. Don't do that. That's where you, that's where you kind of screw up, you know? Give them something good, right? Give them something good now, they'll trust you, they'll buy from you later. Give them something good the first time they buy, they'll buy from you again. That's how this stuff works. That's how the big businesses are built. I know from firsthand experience, okay? So, here's the next big hang up, which is unfortunately not really asked enough, okay? This should be like in the, the biggest question, but it's not. Uh, and that is, how do I turn people into buyers? Okay? This is what nobody really teaches you. All right, sure, they talk about writing sales letters and stuff, but nobody really talks about cultivating a large group of people, turning in, them into raving fans of yours by giving them excellent value and then to converting those raving fans into customers and those customers into repeat customers and into people who recommend you. That is it. That's really, folks, I'm telling you, that's all there is to it, to having a wildly successful business. You generate some people. You turn those folks into friends, fans, whatever you want to call them, by giving them cool stuff. And then you turn those folks into buyers, repeat buyers, and people who refer you. That's it. It's very simple. And this is what mass control does to perfection. Now, this is about the perfect time for me to start pitching mass control, right? But I'm not going to. It's not the time for that. Uh, the fact of the matter is what people and, uh, you know, <coughs> gurus don't realize is the money isn't really in the list. You know, it's in the relationship with the list. So when we say the money's in the list, the money's in the list, the money's in the list, it's not really in the list. Like a list that you abuse and that hates you is worthless. Okay? The money is in the relationship with your list. Once you create a great relationship with your list, you are set for life. I mean, you know, I could bring out the little fancy graphic uh, with the extremely awesome animated uh, graphics and flames and stuff that really is much cooler than Andy Jenkins' uh, animation, you know, that shows you how I made all that money with 7,200-something people. That was a tiny list, but my relationship with them was huge. It was huge. They gave me a million dollars in a combined period of 54 minutes, and they wanted to give me more. I couldn't take more because I promised I would limit my seats to the serializer. Right? They gave Ed and I a million dollars over the course of the year. We did two promotions to that list to generate that income. If you create a great relationship with your list, you are set for life. Okay? It's simple. So here are the simple steps to do it. Okay? First of all, you want to rise above the noise and be different from everybody else. Okay, and I don't mean be different from the sake, just for the sake of being different. 
Just if you blend in, you're like, you, you know, if you walk in a forest wearing camouflage, nobody's going to see you. Okay, and that's cool if you want to sneak up on somebody, but you don't want to sneak up on people in marketing. You want them looking right at you, paying attention to every word you say. And the way you do that is you be different. Now, the way I, I'm able to differentiate myself in the marketing community lots of times is because I'm very laid back. And I'm very hype free, you know, and I just like give people cool stuff. So right now you probably are getting lots of messages saying stupid crap like you don't need to build a list system. We'll be able to work without having a customer or a website or without selling anything. You basically could just like fly and sit around and watch carrots grow and you'll make money. So, you know, you're getting bombarded with that stuff. And I'm here saying, hey, you need you need to do build a list and here's some instruction and value on how to do it. And that's how I rise above the noise. So you can rise above the noise in the same way. Right? You know, if you're selling gardening stuff, instead of giving like lame little articles about gardening, you give them videos showing like here's how, you know, here's how how to dig the hole to plant the tomato the tomato plant in or whatever. You get you see what I mean though. Go the extra mile there. Rise above the noise. Be different. Stand up and step up and you'll do good. Promise it'll work. Whether you buy my stuff or not, you follow this advice I'm giving you right now and you will prosper. Okay? Give excellent value. <laughs> I mean, novel concept, right? You know, this this reminds me of my friend Eben Pagan. Okay, you probably remember Eben from the altitude business. He had his altitude seminars $10,000 a head. He didn't even do a big fancy launch for it, right? And people just flocked to it. People flew from all over the world, took a week away from their business, and gave the guy $10,000 to listen to what he had to say. Why? Because the value that he gave prior to, to launching that seminar was huge. Same if you look at Jeff Walker. You know, the guy is just constantly giving you these case study after case study of just excellent, valuable information. So when he sells something, his list responds. You look at this most recent StomperNet uh, launch, both of them. You know, these guys gave videos for free that changed people's lives. You know, I mean, they had people writing in. I, I watched your video. I'm number one on Google. I'm getting traffic. I'm making money. Thanks, guys. You saved me from having to get a job. My wife's not mad at me anymore, whatever it may be. You give value, excellent value, not just value, excellent value. You got a good relationship now, right? These people know, like, and trust you. This is great. Okay, third thing. Oh, and of course, don't let me like leave out our man John Reese. Right? Like, John Reese was the first person to ever do a really big launch. Well, you know, he'd been giving incredibly good value, just pouring his heart and soul into helping people for over a year before he ever sold anything. Value. Help people out. You know? That whole karma thing, it's real. All right? Third, hey, here's a novel idea. Be a straight shooter. Listen, no one's going to believe a bunch of crap. I mean, you'll have, like, maybe a tiny percentage of people who will just survive off of hype. Right? I mean, if I made these videos and they were all hype and all my stuff was hype and I was like, yes, you're going to make a billion dollars in mass control. All you have to do is just sit around and think about stuff and money will fall from the ceiling and land in your lap. I'd probably get some, some people might buy stuff from me. Yeah, I mean, sure. You know, but not a lot. Right? I wouldn't have a relationship with those people after that, would I? And the people who didn't buy stuff from me, you can guarantee I wouldn't have any credibility with them. So I certainly wouldn't be able to turn that list that I'm building into a lifelong asset, would I? Hell no, because I was bullshitting them. So you can't do that. And I'm not saying that you would, but I know that you're seeing it happen, okay? I know you're witnessing this because you're in this community, right? And, you know, we see a lot of crap in this community. So what I'm telling you is just because you see a lot of other people doing it doesn't mean it's okay, okay? I know you know this, and I know you would never do it, but I just need to say it anyway because, hey, that's one of the simple steps, right? And here's a, here's a really big one. Help people decide that they want your stuff instead of convincing them. Nobody likes a salesman, really. You know, nobody wants to be convinced of anything. But if you help them come to their own conclusion by giving them value and showing them how you're gonna how you're gonna benefit their lives, that's where the true sale is made. And that's where you'll be able to continue making sales. And that's where you have influence over this person in a positive way for a long time. All right? Mutually beneficial. Simple, nobody does it. Don't know why? Hey. Maybe I'm glad they don't. Hey, if, if everybody did this stuff already, I wouldn't be able to teach this course and sell it. You know, I'd be out of a job right now. That wouldn't be any fun. Okay. Finally, you use audio, video, teleseminars, and email to communicate with people if you want to really build a relationship. The reason why is multimedia or multiple modalities, really, is the best way to communicate. Okay. The written word can have an entirely different meaning than the spoken word versus them watching you say something. 